I'm Scott L. Miller. It is the 9th of January, 2024. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today's excitement, for me at least, is that the new equipment has arrived, and yesterday I spent a lot of the day doing some recording around Sutiava, which was a lot of fun, and running out to the airport uh, in order to pick up Paul and get all the new equipment uh, as well that he was bringing back from Miami. So we're going to talk a little bit about the process of going to the airport, what travel is like from Leon, how you could get from here to there, and how his whole experience went. And we'll tell you about the new equipment that we have here on the show that has officially arrived and we are now using. So we're actually filming on some new equipment today. And I'm hoping that with the new equipment, a lot of the show will, one, just look and sound better. That's part of the process that we're always trying to improve, but also that it's going to be potentially a bit easier for me to produce the show as well, which is also important because the workflow uh, is often quite crippling. And yesterday is a... Something just crawled. It, was, it felt like something was crawling across my foot. It was a uh, bougainvillea blossom blowing across my foot, of course. Uh, yesterday was a really exhausting day, and I'll tell you about that right after the bump. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. And yesterday was exhausting. I filmed uh, around Sutiyava. If you haven't watched yesterday, yesterday's episode, please, at the end of this one, go do that. Every time you view an episode, that really helps me. It really does. Um, hit that like, all that stuff. It makes a difference. I know it seems like it's it's crazy. Would that really, it, it really does. Um, but I walked around Sutiyava and I had a microphone failure, which I don't have a replacement lavalier uh, for that one. So it's gonna take a little while before I get that figured out. But in doing so, uh, I had this really exhausting day. I was already on the tired side because I had stayed up till almost three o'clock in the morning the night before playing video games with my kids. And we've been playing uh, Mile Zero, which is the prequel to Road 96, for those who are interested. And um, so I was, I was already tired. I was out in the sun a lot got more tired and then I was all looking forward to like I was it was gonna because it was a walk a barrio walk generally those are pretty easy for me to edit uh, because it's not a lot of like you don't want to clip a whole bunch of stuff because you like zip around so I'm, I'm okay with like dead air like it's just the much easier and when I went to edit it my audio was shot I got maybe two minutes of good audio out of the whole thing and I had to figure out what to do so I had to voice over and when you voice over it is uh, more time-consuming then filming the original episode and it was already late at night by the time I had uploaded everything downloaded got it in was doing editing and I had to leave for the airport at 11 p.m. so I didn't have any buffer time for anything I had to edit upload and all that quite early because I didn't know what was going to go wrong when I went to the airport you never know if you're going to get stuck in traffic and in, in customs who knows there's always the possibility that I'd have to spend the night in Managua so I was just prepared for that uh, and in a bit of a panic so my my evening yesterday was sheer panic trying to get this episode out for you guys because uh, I don't want to miss we've only uh, from from me editing I think we've only missed uh, like one time I don't, actually I don't think we've actually missed an edit we've had an upload that has failed and uh, once we had a schedule that failed or twice uh, but we've basically never missed the 7 a.m. Uh, uh, mark and I, I try to do that like it's uh, it's important to me for my workflow for my my mental state that we hit that every day and make that a consistent thing so that's something I'm working towards I try to always do that but that does put a lot of pressure on me as well so anyway, I was working really hard to get that done because I knew when I got back from the airport I was going to be exhausted. Uh, so I spent the entire evening in, a, in just racing to do that as much as possible. I hope that the episode turned out well uh, given all that. Uh, and then at about 11.15 or so, I jumped in the car uh, and drove off to Managua. I live here in Leon, so that's generally considered to be a two-hour trip out to Managua, and then another 30 minutes or so to get to the airport, which is on the northeast side of Managua. So we have to enter and then cross the entire city to get out to the airport from here, which is a little bit of a negative. If you're coming from Leon, you, had, you just have a lot between us and the airport. So his flight was supposed to get in at 1.30 on Spirit, and uh, a.m. that is and uh, so I left a little bit after uh, 11 I swung into Ciudad Sandino which is right on the way so easy picked up Marcella because she was coming out to be out here today she's working out in the beach today and uh, to pick her up is just it was just perfect timing that we were coming through so she stayed up did some work around her house uh, she had a crew out there painting yesterday uh, so I picked her up and then we drove to the airport and got there pretty much right at 1:30. we actually saw Paul's spirit flight go right over the car as we were coming in 
and uh, I have to say, we were driving, so on the main road, this is a problem in Nicaragua, be aware of this. Driving at night, people warn you about it, and it is kind of dangerous. They don't have the lights that other places do. Um, people tend to have really bright lights in their cars, so you get blinded a lot. There's a lot of potential uh, uh, problems when you're driving at night, and we were coming down. This is the Pan American. This is the east-west road along the lake, major road in the city, and we were coming along, and there were no cars in front of us. It was very, very dark. And all of a sudden I flipped on the brights and Marcella panicked. There was a barrier, complete barrier in the, in the road. It might as well have been a brick wall, right? Concrete barriers down uh, because there was, a, there was a detour. No lights on it, no way to know. You had to know that in the darkness there was a wall in the middle of the road. And this is how much I drive in Managua, right? That they had no problem. I knew exactly where it was. I knew that I had to turn on the lights about then, but had I not had the brights on, had I not been paying attention, had I going any faster, we would have slammed into a barrier. I can't believe more people aren't hitting it. Um, and then right after that, we were really close to the airport and the, the guy on a motorcycle in front of us, no other traffic, apparently got really tired and just drifted off the road, went into a ditch, ran into the sidewall, <laughs> lost it, bounced and came back on the road. He was fine. So no, no like really bad thing happened, but he was wide awake after that. And so our drive out to the airport went great, no problems, and it took me almost exactly two hours with picking Marcella up on the way. We got there at uh, about 1.35. Paul actually landed at 1.31, sent me the text that he was there, but we had seen his plane, so we knew where he was. We were just down the street. Uh, but we knew it was gonna take a little bit for him to get through customs and, and migration and all that stuff. You have to go through border control. So this is a good tip right across from the entrance to the airport. So as you're heading east, the entrance is on the west side of the airport, airport's on the south side of the road. So you're heading east from nearly everywhere in the country. If you're coming from like Matagalpa, it would be the other direction. You'd have to go past the airport on your left, uh, and then the entrance is at the far side. Uh, but as you're coming from Leon, from Managua, from most places, it's gonna be on your right. Uh, you as And if you turn in, uh, just before you turn in, there is an Uno gas station with a Pronto, which is their uh, uh, their mini mart, right? So they got they got food. They can make food for you. They got like you know things the normal things you have at a gas station, but they're a nice one. Um, they're not as nice as the Super Sevens, but they are quite nice. Like you, you know, always use one, right? They're great, and they, and they often have public bathrooms. That's important to know uh, if you're traveling across the country. Prontos are perfect for finding those public bathrooms uh, wherever you go. Uh, so. We, we knew he wasn't going to be too long. We hoped, right? The, the hope was that it was going to be pretty fast, but we knew it had to take 15 to 30 minutes, no matter what. His luggage has got to come out. It's got to go through all those processes. So we swung around, went into the Pronto, uh, and Marcella actually got dinner because they do, they will make you hot dogs. This is really standard in Nicaragua. You go to the gas stations, they're going to make you hot dogs, make you nachos, make you ramen. They call it mar mar maruchan here, but ramen, um, often pizza, subs, a number of things. Nothing's fancy. The, the limit at night, it could get a lot more limiting, but in general, you have um, a lot of food and you don't have to do it yourself. You just talk to the, you go up to the cashier and say, I want a hot dog. They'll say, which one? Say, I want the monster dog. They say, what do you want on it? Say everything. You probably don't want to say that. Nicaraguans put a lot more on dogs than we do. They slather them with ketchup, mustard, mayo. Uh, but so she she got this monster dog and um, and we picked up a few snacks, got some drinks and then chilled uh, at the Pronto for 15 or 20 minutes until Paul said he was ready. The Pronto, when you leave, when you come out of the Pronto, you're able to basically go straight across the street, take a quick left and a quick right, right into the airport. So it's kind of ideal if you're waiting for someone who is uh, arriving at the airport and you need someplace to sit because otherwise you, you can't sit in front of the airport because they'll make you move along and if you go into parking, you have to pay. And what are you going to do? You're just stuck in parking. But if you go to the Pronto, you can pick up food, you can get snacks, you can fuel up the car if you need, you can use the bathroom if you need, get drinks, whatever. So it's very flexible. Plus they have a little spot to eat there. So if you're going to get something, you know, get nachos or whatever, sit there, just enjoy a soda for a little bit. And instead of spending money on parking, you know, just be ready for your trip back wherever. It's it's kind of perfect. We only had to wait there for about 10 minutes, which was really quite perfect because we were able to um, uh, not use the parking lot and pay for that, but we were able to get everything we needed, ate the hot dog straight across the street. It was perfect. By about 1.55, uh, Paul was already out of the airport, had let us know, we crossed the street and just picked him right up, threw everything in the car, and we were gone and on our way back. That was about as convenient as it could possibly be. It went so incredibly well. Now, I just want to relay a little bit about what his experience was like. I talked about this in the shorts already. On his northbound flight from 
Managua to Miami. He went up and it took him more than two hours to get through customs and immigration going into the United States. This is where he's a citizen. And with his bags being empty, because he took nothing north, it was so time consuming to get into the U.S. MMA problems, but it took a really long time. Coming into Managua, he's not a citizen and not officially a resident, just a tourist, and with bags that were absolutely full. So first of all, they were full, full, like absolutely packed to the limit. We had all kinds of camera gear, which I mentioned in another short. We had two cameras, this one that I'm on, the Sony, a brand new Fuji, tons of lenses, tons of microphones and stuff like serious camera gear, really hardcore stuff and lots of it, and a lot of it still in the original packaging shrink wrapped uh, uh still in the boxes all kinds of stuff so if they were ever going to give someone a problem about uh camera gear coming in this would have been it there was no effort taken to hide that this was brand new purchases being brought in and zero problems they didn't say a single word as they're not supposed to but they didn't people worry about that a lot not a problem so that was perfect um, we also had a new uh, MetaQuest 3, so a head VR headset, um, all kinds of stuff, uh, new new phones, lots and lots of stuff. I'm noticing on this camera that the uh, auto exposure is all over the place. Um, I've heard that problem with Sony in many cases. Maybe I can learn how to lock that out a bit uh, to make it more stable. Sometimes it looks really good on the monitor, sometimes it does not. Uh, and uh, so he had no problems. It was so fast, his entire process was about 20 minutes or less, probably more like 10 to 15 of actual uh, uh, aduana, which is customs and migracion, which is immigration and border control, uh, simply because he um, took a little bit to get off the plane, but he was towards the beginning of the plane. So uh, he said he had to wait about five minutes to get his luggage and you know, works out. The total was 20 to 25 minutes for everything from the time he got out of his seat on the plane until he was standing outside waiting for us. And then we were able to get him in a minute or two. Such an easy process of coming in. So our drive from the airport, see now it's like super dark. I have no idea what this camera is doing. I definitely need to learn some stuff about this, but I watch camera conspiracies and he definitely has a lot of complaints about the way that Sony handles color and exposure. It has a lot, and you can see it just gradually and then it goes back down, no concept. And I get a five minute recording limit automatically cuts off, which is really short. So it changes how I'm gonna record when I use this camera. It's not really meant for this kind of talking head stuff, but I'm experimenting with it and I wanna do a fast process today, but it really does curtail how I'm going to record. And I should note that it only took eight minutes of recording to uh, a five minute session, and a three minute session for the thing to overheat. So it's certainly very limiting in a lot of ways, but I'm hoping that when at least it's exposing correctly and the audio is good, that it is uh, pretty pleasant to use. I'm going to move it just a little bit because definitely the, the spot that I'm in is way more than it can handle for exposure. Yep, and here we are again. Now we look good for a moment, but it won't last. All right, so we got out of the airport. That all was so smooth and easy. Then we drove home. Now, this is about two o'clock in the morning that we finally got him and got into the car. We didn't have any stops we had to make. We could move really quickly uh, and we were able to go. This is unbelievable. We went from Managua Airport on the northeast side of, of Managua all the way across Managua through Ciudad Sandino, all the way along the lake, through Nagarote, through La Paz Centro, all the way out to Leon, all the way through Leon, through the barrios, all the way through Sutiava to the west side out on the Ponaloya Road. And we did all of that in 71 minutes from the airport to our house. 71 minutes. That is so easy. Now, of course, we have our own car. We know the way. There's zero traffic in the middle of the night. And you got to be super careful. And we saw, this is amazing, we saw a lemur run across the road in front of the car. And it's also amazing we didn't hit it, right? It was really close. We had to dodge it. But a lemur, which is one of the funniest things to see crossing the road, jumped across the road right in front of us. That was, I've never seen that. I've never seen a lemur here, let alone one on the road right in front of us. It was really wild, uh, but that was that was really cool. So by the time we got home, it was just uh, th about 3.10 and so exhausted. I am so tired getting home. Uh, and then we had to unpack, make sure the camera gear was there, check a bunch of stuff, get to bed. So it was about four o'clock when I got to bed and I had to be up at, at seven o'clock uh, this morning. So I'm very, very tired, looking forward to getting a nap, hoping to get this episode out pretty quickly. But the whole experience of flying, um, doing the round trip through Miami went really well. 
Uh, the cost of the hotels in Miami was ridiculous, that's worth noting, uh, but the, the flight on Spirit was fantastic. Paul said he really, and I've said this before, but he said it independently to me, that he really likes the middle of the night Spirit flight because yes, it's inconvenient because it's middle of the night, but you're the only flight coming in and out. Everything is super easy. Everybody's really chill and casual because it's the middle of the night. There's no traffic when you get to or from the airport in Managua. There's much less in Miami. It makes the logistics around flying so much much easier and if you don't have a ride it doesn't matter when you get in because you're just gonna cross the street and go to the best Western across the street that's what we recommend that's so easy the rabbit overheating is definitely a problem on the camera it's not so useful for doing the long-form video I got to have very discreet segments so uh, if you're gonna be arriving at Managua and you need to come out to Leon you have a few options uh, coming in in the middle of the night and you want to use public transportation you want to keep things simple the Best Western is directly across the street, and it's quite nice. Nothing super fancy, but they have a restaurant. It's easy for Americans to deal with. They understand travelers. They're dealing with people from the airport every day. I recommend it a lot. It's not the cheapest, but it is at the airport. It's directly across the street. My kids enjoy staying there, so that's a great option. And the food is good, right? It's a nice place. Uh, from there, uh, if, you, if you have someone picking you up, of course, you don't need to do that. But if you want to be able to get in in the middle of the night, just know you have a place to stay. Don't worry about times. Don't worry about getting picked up. None of that. That makes life really easy. To get out to Leon during the day, you've got public transportation. The Uka bus comes out. It's very fast. It's a little bit over uh, an hour and a half. It's relatively comfortable if you have a lot of luggage. That can be a problem, but it, it, they can accommodate a bit, but they'll put it on top of the bus. You can hire a private driver to go out. That's going to be probably about $100 depending, but that's that's really not so bad considering the distance that you're going and that you don't have to deal with anything. And if you want to stop somewhere, generally, they'll have no problem stopping for food or snacks. They might even be able to give you a little bit of a guide to the area or whatever. So that can work out really well. Uh, if you are looking for the cheapest possible option, the chicken, which is probably, there's no perfect option, right? Because if you come in in the middle of the night, which if you're coming during the day, if you're coming in on American or United, you might be able to go directly to a bus or something and do it cheaper. But if you're coming in on Spirit to save money on the flight, then you're gonna be there in the middle of the night and you have to deal with a hotel. Really cheap hotels around the airport don't look so good. I've never stayed in one. I'm not saying that you should not do it, but just be aware. I haven't seen one that I said, ooh, I, I should use that, it's cheaper. Uh, the, the chicken bus will be even cheaper coming out uh, to Leon and probably getting a little bit more luggage on that won't be too much of a problem. Uh, those are extremely inexpensive, but keep in mind that the Uka bus is only a few dollars. You're only going to save like one to two dollars max per person coming out on the chicken bus. That'll take a little bit longer, but that's fine. Um, you do need to be a little bit more careful. Like you really never hear about people having things stolen on the Uka buses. It could happen. Like I'm not saying it's not, but you, you, it tends to be such a small group and the way you sit. But on the chicken bus, there tends to be a lot more people moving around. It's a lot more likely that someone might lean over and grab something out of your bag. Certainly nothing violent's gonna happen, but we all know stories of people who've been on the chicken buses. That is the uh, the big school buses being used as public transport. And someone just, you know, nicks something out of a backpack or something when someone wasn't looking. So just be aware, it, just because of the way the bus works, it tends to be a little bit uh, more dangerous for that. Private drivers end up being, for a lot of people, just the way to go. If you're on vacation, that's what you want to do. And of course, if you know somebody or if your hotel can arrange for it, you can just get picked up that way. It's really not bad. The drive it, at longest is only about two hours unless you're sitting in traffic. And like we did it in just over an hour. And if you're going from uh, to, to downtown Leon or something on the east side, it's that much faster. We went all the way across Leon, which is not that big of a city, but it does make a difference. So it's really not bad getting to most of the country. Transportation is pretty easy. All right, so real quick, I want to tell you about the equipment we brought in. And all of this made it through customs without them saying a single word, not a thing. Thing. Nothing. People always ask me, they're like, Scott, th th there must be problems bringing in cameras. The U.S. always tells us all these problems that we have with Nicaragua. There, you, there has to be problems with cameras. I'm sure someone, no, there's no problems with cameras. It is a presidential mandate. This is a directive directly to border control that they are not to mess with your cameras. They're not to tax it. They're not to question you. They're not to hold it. They're not to do whatever. Cameras are allowed in because they're part of tourism and they help promote the country. I brought in the Sony ZV-1, which is a film camera that I'm on right now. It's it's used for vlogging specifically. And if you look at it, anyone who knows cameras at all would instantly be like, that is a Sony dedicated vlogging camera for this purpose. I also brought in the, the Fuji X-S20. This is the latest. This is the camera of the year from a lot of sources. It's a major camera. Does 6.2K open gate, unbelievable quality, like really good stuff. 
that came and brand new. Every one of these things is new except the Sony. Uh, all new lenses, a TT Artisan, still in box, limited edition, an entire Suri uh, cinema set of lenses, still in shrink wrap. No questions. And that's a big, heavy thing. Uh, brought in the, the Fujinon uh, zoom lens with it. Got a Rode Boom microphone. Uh, two camera bags. Uh, an entire, like, this big of a stack of KNF filters, like Nano X stuff, with circular polarizers, UVs, uh, ND64s, whole range of things. Um, cables, tons of cables, HDMI cables in giant bundles. It may not sound like anything special, but giant bundles of HDMI cables, like 25 foot long, multiple industrial HDMI cables, tons of adapters, a laptop. Of course, it was just one laptop, right? But all this stuff, like, this was so much stuff. Now it's legit. We're all using it for uh, lots of normal things. All the reasons that the government says this stuff is supposed to be allowed. It's perfect, but people are sure that these things will cause problems. No problems whatsoever. Not one word said, not one bit of hesitation, no delays at all, straight through. Now, it, it, someone may have a different experience, but we've tried this a number of times. We're bringing in camera gear on a regular basis. Never had any problems whatsoever. Video game computers, yes, we've had problems, but not uh, photographic equipment, nothing that a tourist would use, nothing that someone filming the country would use, nothing that a vlogger would use has ever caused any problem. But last night we also brought in a new VR headset, no problem. Brought in a new Steam Deck, no problem. So a lot of things are coming in, no problem, but those are things that could be more likely, especially the, the VR headset, because it's a little bit harder to argue that it's for a tourist uh, rather than someone importing it for, for domestic use. And it's a gray area of how you look at it, but it is a portable VR headset. So it's a little bit more legit for tourists than the ones we've had in the past. So I don't know, but that is the story. Anyway, so that is our update for the day. I wanted to kind of give you a logistics update because one, I'm testing out the new camera and the new Rode microphone uh, and uh, lots more gear to be playing with. I'll show all that to you pretty soon. Not that you guys are that interested in my camera stuff, but this camera that I'm talking on is the one that Javier and the community uh, raised funds for to get for me and the channel. So thank you so much for that. I'm really looking forward to all the things we can do with it. I'm not going to use it for this form of video too often. Uh, this is kind of a specialty thing to test it out. We're going to be using it for getting more in the field footage, things that I need shorter forms to then edit together and a lot more like just having a camera with me when I'm out and about. So it's perfect for that. Anyway, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching the show. If you could take a moment to tell a friend or a family member about the show, post on social media, Reddit, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, that kind of stuff. Just let people know about the show. Uh, that really does help a lot. And of course, if you'd like to sponsor the channel, it would mean a lot to me. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And that is how we raise money for things like this specialty camera and other equipment that we need for making the show and making better and more uh, robust content for you guys. Thank you so much. I will see all of you tomorrow.